Good evening. The Lord be with you this the Wednesday of Laetare. Uh, the order of service is Divine Service Setting 3. We will speak that as usual on Wednesday. Just note that the glory in Excelsius as well as the Alleluias are omitted. Uh, we will pray Psalm 102 responsibly as, uh, as uh, printed in the bulletin on page 3. Uh, following that immediately with the catechism for tonight, what sins should we confess, uh, which is also uh, included on page four. Uh, after that, uh, uh, we will be we'll sit and be seated for that. Uh, after the reading of the Passion of Our Lord according to St. Mark from four, chapter 14 tonight, we will stand for the Apostles' Creed uh, for this evening. Uh, everything else is as usual, and so we begin with our opening hymn, Jesus Grant That Balm and Healing, Lutheran Service Book, 421.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, Peace be within you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray together responsively. Psalm 102 is found in your bulletin. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my trouble. And hide your ears to me in the day that I fall. Answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke. And my bones are burned like fire. My heart is stricken and withered like grass. Because of the sound of my groaning, my bones my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I, am like the of the I lie awake. And I'm my enemies reproach me all day long. Those who me swear an oath against me. For I have eaten ashes like bread. Because of your indignation and your wrath. 
My days are like a shadow that lengthens. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever. Your will, or you, will arise and have mercy on Zion. For your servants take pleasure in your in your in her stones. So the nations shall fear the name of the Lord. For the Lord shall build up Zion. He shall regard the prayer of the destitute. This will be written for the generation to come. For he looked down from the height of his his sanctuary to hear the groaning of the prisoner to declare the name of the Lord in Zion. When the peoples are gathered together He, we, he weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. I said, O oh my God, do not take me away in the midst of my days. Your years are throughout all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. Yes, they will all grow old like a cloak. You will change them, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years The children of your servant will continue, and their descendants will be established before you. Our catechism for this evening is confession. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. The Passion of Our Lord, according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. And they led Jesus to the high priest, And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed Jesus at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, But their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this, their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked Jesus, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witness do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the the Nazarene, Jesus. 
but he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But Peter began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. This is the passion of our Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our text for tonight is Psalm 102, which we prayed earlier in the service. We will also be examining the explanation of the Office of the Keys as we prayed from the Catechism as well. I am like a lonely sparrow on the housetop, so prays our psalmist. There are times in our lives when we feel like that sparrow, alone, in a big empty space, without a friend in the world. But notice, notice that for the psalmist, this isn't simply loneliness. What is it that has separated him from his friends? What is it that has brought him to see his own mortality and fear? What is it that has brought him, brought his own mortality and fear right in front of his face? It is God's indignation. It is God's wrath at his sin. When God's law does its work in our hearts, we are alone and silent before an angry God. For remember, God does not overlook sin. Sin must be punished. As Paul said, through the law comes knowledge of sin. This is what the law does. It's what it does, my friends. It, it crushes us. It shows us that we deserve death and condemnation. The law casts us into hell. Remember, hell is complete separation from God. And sin is what separates us from God. We are not worthy to be in his presence. So these sins cling to us. They cling to us and hold us back and down. These sins seek to keep you away from God and his mercy. Sin tries to blind you to your own true character as a beggar before God. But God's law will have its way with you. Like Jesus looking at Peter last week, God's law looks at you. And you see yourself for what you truly are. A sinner. A sinner who needs redemption. This is what confession and absolution is all about. This is what the gospel is all about. The gospel is about forgiveness of sins. The gospel is about reconnecting you to the God who saves you. As the psalmist wrote, But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. He promises to arise and have mercy on Zion. He will have mercy on you. That is his promise. His promise for all eternity. So what does this have to do with confession and absolution? Well, let's look at the small catechism again. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. God wants us to plead guilty of all sins, even the ones we are not aware of. We do this in the Lord's Prayer every day. We also do this in the general confession and absolution on Sunday and every time we gather for the divine service. But individual confession and absolution is about what troubles the sinner's conscience. Last week I said that we don't confess for God's sake, for God knows our sins. We're not telling him anything new. Rather, we confess for ourselves. We confess so that God will forgive us. As a sinner, I want to hear what God's, we want to hear that God forgives me. We want to hear it. We don't want to read about it. I don't want to read about it and I don't want to simply pray about it and wonder whether it can really be true. That is one of Satan's great games. Satan loves to cast doubt on God's forgiveness. 
But where Satan casts doubt, our Lord plants a tree, a tree of righteousness and certainty. Remember when you hear of our Lord's passion, when you hear of our Lord's passion and death at Calvary, that is for you. Remember it. He was abandoned by all so that you would never be abandoned and left alone. He was flogged and spat upon so that you would never bear those marks from God. He was given over to the hands of his enemies so that you may remain in God's presence forever. Yes, Jesus died so that you might live. So when Satan flings your sins at you, when the world tells you that you are not worthy to be saved, when your own conscience casts doubt in your heart about your life and salvation, where do you flee? Flee to God and his word of absolution, his forgiveness. Our Lord died on the cross so that your sins would be forgiven. So why cling to your sins? Why cling to them? Instead, confess them. Confess them and our Lord will fling them into the depths of the sea. As he said in Psalm 103, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Every time you hear words about forgiveness from God, that is about Christ's death on the cross. It is also about your baptism. For it is in holy baptism that God connects that God connected you to Christ's death and resurrection. And it is in absolution, the forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, that returns you to those holy waters of forgiveness again and again and again. That, my friends, is the Christian life. So rejoice. Rejoice, for God hears your prayers for mercy. You are not alone as a sparrow on a housetop. The God who laid the foundations of the earth and who sent his Son to die for you will hold you in the palm of his hand and love you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, your Son has assured forgiveness of sins and deliverance from eternal death. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit that our faith in Christ may increase daily and that we may hold fast to the hope of, uh, that on the last day we shall be raised in glory to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, our shepherd, protect, comfort, and guide all who call upon you in need, especially Judith Stewart, Darlene Model, Cheryl Krieger, David Rathke, Sandy Mollick, Sandy Schmakowski, and all those whom we now name in our hearts. Grant healing and peace that they may continue to serve you with joy in this life and finally come to that good land in your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works, 
Give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. Blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Christ shed for you. 
Love Christ. Check. Read it. 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 body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, throughout this life and the life to come, revived in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. couple announcements. Uh, tomorrow morning we wrap up our Bible study, our study of uh, the book of Acts with Acts 28 and uh, uh, Paul making it to Rome. Uh, so all are encouraged to come to that, even if you haven't so far. Uh, then we will have a three-week hiatus uh, as we go through uh, Passion Tide and the following week after Easter. Uh, and then we will resume uh, but we will take up the Old Testament book of Proverbs, and that is going to be on the 11th of April, uh, that Thursday. So we'll look at Proverbs, uh, for a Psalm, uh, ah, Solomon's words of wisdom uh, from God uh, for us to, to study. So uh, you, if you haven't come then, or come so far, you can come again and, and start a new book with us uh, this uh, April 11th. Um, 
next week. Do we have somebody to cook for us yet? Yes, we do. What are we having? Anybody know? Ham, potatoes, and beans. Okay. And maybe I might be generous and I might throw a little uh, corned beef in there with you. Some of that ham. So, all right. So, um, uh, so, yes, come back next week. We have meals next week. Next Wednesday is our last midweek Wednesday. Uh, so we have uh, Utica coming up this next Sunday and uh, the beginning of Passion Tide, And then Holy Week already is uh, upon us. So um, Holy Week, we will have no Wednesday divine service that week, but then we will have uh, Monday, Thursday at 7 o'clock, uh, Good Friday at 1 o'clock. That's the commemoration of the cross and the reading of the uh, of the Passion from all four Gospels. And then uh, at 7 o'clock, we will have the Tenebrae Vespers uh, for Good Friday. Uh, Saturday morning at 9 a.m., we'll gather to, uh, to clean the church and the property, as well as at 9.30, we'll have uh, dying of the eggs for the kids. So if you have any eggs for that, please come for that. And then uh, Easter morning, we'll have 6 o'clock breakfast, and then all 6 o'clock service, then breakfast, and then 9 o'clock uh, Easter sunrise. Both of those services are different, so you can come and stay for both. It'll be a great day uh, to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord on the 31st of March. So, any other announcements at this time? Yes, Bronwyn. I was just going to share with you and, and everyone here that I'm going to share with you that I'm ashamed of how long it took me to even get the message that God wanted me to figure out that Monday, Thursday, Monday, yeah, it's not, it's not, Monday, yes, M-A-U-N-D-Y, uh, the mandate, it's the Latin from the mandate, the mandatum, uh, to love as he has loved us, so, to forgive one another our sins, so, uh, so we look forward to that. Uh, any other notes? Seeing none, may God keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless.